is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. And I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there. I'll tell you how I became the prince of a town called Bel Air. All right, welcome back to the Cycling Collab Podcast, the off-record, off-the-cuff, and sometimes off-topic look at all things cycling from here at home and around the world. I'm Angus Petrie, and uh, joining me, of course, is the self-proclaimed gangster of cycling, <laughs> uh, Mr. Rion Nolan. <laughs> you boy. <laughs> welcome back, Rion. Here we are, our official podcast one. Savage. Epic. What's been going on? Nah, I'm a bit cocked, eh? But cooked. I heard but they cooked. tore your legs off today. Yeah, I oh, bro. Have you done Tuesday Worlds before? <laughs> have you done Tuesday Worlds? I have not done Tuesday Worlds. No, you can. You're welcome. There's heaps of well, it's it's definitely quieting down. I wouldn't suggest turning up before Tour South. And although there was a cool young tip there, uh Bria, she was there today. Yeah, they ripped my legs off. Oh, I... Holy shit, old Vink dog. Eh? Actually, there's you know when you're riding with when Southland's coming up, eh? You can tell who goes away up the hills and who's strong and informing and shape and da-da because Tour Southland's coming up this way. Yeah, that's what I've been up to. So who'd you put in the gutter? I got put in the gutter, mate. <laughs> yeah. I got dropped by everyone. <laughs> oh, bro, I, I must say that I did my first BMX race on Sunday. 40 years old, first time on a BMX over the last like month. And um, that was pretty cool, eh? To be humbled, I got my ass kicked. I was in the master's grade. Even this lady, like, she smashed me. She got, like, six. I got ninth or whatever it is. I got my ass kicked. But I did five races. I got fifth in my first one and then got last, last, last. So you couldn't you couldn't pedal your way out of that one. No, nah, right? I couldn't pedal yeah. shit. Nah, it's all about technique and skill. Though. Oh, yeah, uh, pretty cool though. Sweet. Yeah. Well, what a cool show we've got tonight. Um, first of all, though, a big thank you to uh, all of those that have got on board with our cycling collab podcast. Hundred uh, percent. Those of you that are following us now on our social media, on our Instagram and Facebook, but of course, especially those that are have gone over to YouTube and watched our first show, our little quick intro to who we are and what we're doing. To uh, those that subscribed, gave it a like. I think we had 430-something viewers. I thought that was pretty so, good for our little 10-minute yeah. ten minute blurb. Awesome. Um, so, But if you haven't, hey, please get over there, do that. Hit yeah. the like, hit the subscribe, uh, tell everybody about us because we are here and we're yeah. here to stay. Yeah, awesome. Uh, also, secondary thing, a big thank you also to our great team behind us yeah, who have, uh, oh, a bit hard to see there, but our new Mo Media. Set. In fact, what I'll do is we'll just go here. Look at this. Our new Mo Media yeah, coffee cups. How's that? That's Set. pretty cool. Awesome. There is more than just um, you and me behind this behind this podcast. We're on. There's a couple of other special people that are helping us out, get all this together. 100% hotties. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a cut. No, joke, joke, jokes, jokes, mind, jokes, jokes, jokes. Uh, right, eh? So, <clears throat> shall we roll on? Yeah, News of the world, my friend. News, News of the, the world. world. There's yeah. been like, I don't know, we're right in this period of cycling yeah. right now that there is just yeah. so much going on, yeah, huh. uh, which is, <clears throat> I guess, where we came up with the idea of actually doing something like this, right? Because <laughs> there's so much going on and it's so much to talk about and yeah. people need to know. Bro, I've forgotten. There's too much. I'm like, holy, there's so much wicked information and people and races and energy and vibes <laughs> and shit. I'm like, whoa, like, because it's been, it's been epic, the racing, eh? I sent you this list and uh, of things we may cover, and you went Ella Philippe who? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> that's, what? That's how that long guy. ago it seems yeah. since he won his Bro, second world yeah. champs. I, I think he's the second guy to do so, I, I think. Anyway, correct me if I'm wrong, but fuck. Bro, did you see, anyway, just touching on that, my – Crucial moment for me. Um, actually, Ron Cheatley put that up on um, on Facebook. But Alaphilippe went up to his teammate. Obviously, whispered, "It's on. It's on." When you watch the race, you'll see it. Rewatch re it. It's a wicked moment about teamwork and you know communication and races and to set up the win. But fuck, he went up to him next to him uh, and obviously said, "Bro, attack full gas." And then he done that, got on his wheel, and then re-attacked over top of them. But boom, that was just over twenty k to go. I think. Fucking epic, eh? He made them look like. Like D graders versus uh, world tour professional, like boom, savage attack. It was typical Ella Philippe, really, wasn't it? Yeah, like man. the guy goes, uh, you know, pretty deep to get to there, but then always seems yeah. to have that extra little bit oh, to bro. go over the top of everybody. Yeah, imagine, so, bro, imagine that set two world champion, like what the hell? And then imagine your wife, kids, whatever, sponsors, like the bike, just man, wicked. And it's not easy to win a World Champs road nowadays because it's kind of almost, or well, the last few have, they've been a little bit set up to get the sprinters to the yeah, end sure, yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to get there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
In yeah. our case, bro, it's not easy to win a race. <laughs> <laughs> Put him in the gutter. Oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, things else around the world, young Sam Gaze. How good is that to yeah. see? Bro, it's me, eh? Like, um, it's interesting, eh? Like, uh, I, I, I just genuinely love seeing uh, New Zealanders get signed to like big teams or any team, really. But when you, but yeah, and to see him, he's been getting on podiums. And, bro, do you see the, um, the UCI mountain bike race? He, he started fuck, way back. World Cup champ or world champs. Yeah. And then he came, where did he finish? Right? 70. He was, was he, correct me if I'm wrong, but he was 70 something of, yeah. off the back to start with. Came through for sixth overall at the world champs. Yeah. Out the um, and had four of the six fastest lap times for the race right. or something, I think. So yeah. the That's guy a, has yeah. found some form. And I got to say, right. huge, like I remember when Sam. Uh, you know, got that specialized deal and away he went and yeah, oh, man, yeah. you've made the big time now. You've hit yeah, you've hit specialized. Yeah, yeah. But and then obviously he's been through that slump and form mm. and a few medical things and whatnot. And yeah. Um to be on that Alpacin Phoenix team, they've really invested oh. some cool stuff into him and allowed yeah. him to go through that recovery process yeah, and, and then that rebuild. And yeah. and he's really starting to Yeah, me no. You know, it's and pretty what do you know the race he just won? I don't know actually what the name of it was, but Bro, it was mean all the fans like it was like what's cool about just to like all these races that we're watching, all the fans are back. So you imagine like racing with no crowd. Well, not here in New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, eh, bro? But now it's this full gas. It's seeing, and then bro, I seen him cross the finish line, like put his hands in the ears, and and all the people like fucking cheering him on. I was like, fucking awesome. And then three days later, they said they released they signed him for three years, and I was like, sick. Yeah, no, that's cool, and that'll give him some reassurance. It'll be right. interesting to see how much road work he yeah. ends up doing. And I tell you, this, this is how it puts me in my place. I always think, like, because I do a little bit of mountain biking now, I'm shit, but I still just try. I love riding mountain bikes hard. And uh, I'm like, when I when I heard, I think I was on this first, Sam Gaze's first tour of Southland. And in my mind, this is me. This is putting shit on myself here. I was like, oh, I was a mountain biker. Fuck, he's going to get wasted. Neck, minute, ripping it up, climbs, and the crosswinds with the front hitters. I've been doing it for years. Uh, exactly the same as... um uh. Bro, who are the other man boxes from Canterbury or out, out south there? The other boys? The so the Oliver, Oliver boys? Yeah, like, same thing. They go and rip it. Look at Anton getting uh, second in the race, getting bridging that whole way, the, like, 80k solo will think, double two-up TT, whatever. That. It's just wicked, eh? They can cross over. Yeah, Sack. yeah. And more and more so now we're seeing that. And that's, you know, we used to see the world tour yeah road riders here and yeah, then we used yeah, to see yeah. them over there the yeah. you know the mountain bikers or cycle crosses or whatever yeah, but that yeah. crossover is definitely coming yeah 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 and and i think you're finding that the, those coming from cyclocross and mountain biking are actually bringing more strength yeah. to the road than what the actual pure road guys yeah, have got 100 yeah. percent. you know um oh and just going touching on those uh those mountain bikers as well like uh who's over there? so ben is over at so, the moment so ben oliver's been over there and cam jones yeah they've both been over there uh dabbling away in some uci yep. races and taken, collecting points um they've taken that young little hitter over ethan Eth rose ethan rose Holy has been there shit, with him and what he's a weapon. rides a trick too just saying <laughs> but just... what a boss eh? Hey? and so they're over there bro and they're, they're like mixing it up um you know making podiums here and there and starting from way, way back and getting a pretty good European experience. And the trouble they've had is, is that they've had trouble getting into races um, oh, <clears> because right. they haven't yeah. haven't had a UCI team behind them to get them in. So yeah. actually a good time to touch on what's happening. Um, Scott Woods out of Nelson has created a new team. Heard about that. Uh, so And huge big ups right now, big ups to Tellys. Go and buy some Tellys fries or some Tellys peas or some, 100%. go to the supermarket of the frozen section, yeah, buy uh, something from Tellys because Tellys have got in behind this and um, they've formed Team Tellys. They've UCI registered this team, um, <clears throat> which is now going to allow the likes of um, Ethan Woods, Cam Jones, Annabelle Bly, so, uh, Josie Wilcox is in there, and a couple more. Working. So <clears throat> that is now the idea of starting the UCI team was basically to allow a way in to these races for these yeah. riders. Oh, that's fuck. That's awesome. That's that's the shit I love, eh? You know, um, so is it the same tallies like? Management as its Tour of Southland uh, Vink Dogs team must be surely. I reckon it is. I'm going to call it. They must be just involved and they love sports and cycling. Uh yeah. There's a few people uh, within the Tellys group there out of Nelson Motchwaker and things yeah. that are, are big cyclists. So, that's cool. Um, but you know, it. I, I'm probably going to be pretty controversial here, but Yo, um, shit. Watch out, <clears throat> we're going to put someone in the gutter, and I think it's going to be NZ Cycling. We're going to put in the gutter here oh, because fuck, it's bro. it's taken yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. taken this private entity. Yeah to do what we should be doing to get our guys yeah over there. I think it's been been done for years. Like people have been having to self-fund. Like I won't get into that. But 
Do you know the other thing that I, I was pretty rough about? I remember Ben was trying to get into some wicked race over there, like full gas hit a race. And because apparent, oh, I don't want to get wrong either, but because uh, Bike NZ or whoever, they wouldn't sign something to say he had the license or something because they, they, I don't know, their rules and regulations, so they couldn't. So he couldn't race it, but he was there. And the week before, he got the mean as podium. So that, but, <clears throat> again, I, I don't know the full story yeah, either, but yeah. what I know is, is that right. he was there. He was on a scheduled amount of races that, that, uh, exactly for this reason, this team's been formed. So yeah, uh, yeah. NZ Cycling, from what I understand, and I hope we're not totally speaking out of turn, but they had entered Ben in uh, set races uh, and through that had got the entry. Because they hadn't entered him in that next one and he didn't belong to a UCI team or have a way in, uh, that's why he couldn't race. Yes. And it was yeah, essentially a paperwork thing that probably could have been sorted, which wasn't, which was a bit disappointing. But anyway, okay. if this team tallies and Scott Woods can yeah, um, put this together, this will be great it's and awesome. create some great opportunities. Yeah, that's me, no. That's awesome. I hope it... I hope other people get behind tallies and the people behind it to try and make it, you know, so it's not just one thing. It goes on for years, eh? Imagine that. We'll, we'll get in. We'll we'll find a way and we'll get ourselves in backstage and uh, backstage. and get the goss on that. And <laughs> Annabelle, make, you're up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, something that's been, uh, been was very interesting in the weekend was the women's hour record reel. Oh, yeah. that Yeah, bro. That's what could I uh, just just back to myself now. I did an hour record down at Denton Park here. <laughs> Me and uh, this young fella, Matt Trenchard, uh, we're hanging out for old doing training and stuff like that. And he, had this, he goes, Oh, bro, you should do an hour record on my track bike. And I was like, All right, got on the track bike for the first time. He put the, the bars on and stuff like that. And I did an hour test. I can't remember what I'd done, but holy shit, what I realized was, Fuck, my ass hurt like hard out, bro. Think deep. Damn. How far did you go? I actually can't remember. There's two. I could find out, but um, and you know, not a very pro track, outdoor concrete blockhead one one way. Oh my god, it was out of the game. <laughs> but it, for me though, I was the game. I just I, for me, I was like, fuck, it was cool just doing that. And then then when I'm when I watch these hour record attempts, and you know, man, it's wicked, eh? The, all the technology that goes into it, like uh, this, and there's also her partner uh, broke the British record the few days later, which wasn't allowed to be done. Uh, as a world record, he didn't do that anyway. But and I kind of I understand it because if you're going to be representing the country, the world, and setting records, you need to be on the drug testing thing, right? Yeah. Sure. So let's just define that. So we'll come back to Jocelyn here in a second, who actually has set a new UCI world yeah, record. Yeah, yeah. But point. but her husband, he like you said, set the British record, but wasn't able to have a a UCI world record because yeah. he's not on the, the whereabouts yeah. page where they know where you are and they can yeah, come and yeah. drug test you at any time. And because of that yeah. technicality, he isn't qualified for an actual UCI world record, which I get what you're saying. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's probably the right thing yeah. to make sure that it's fair, but you it was know, only eight grand, bro. Because uh, her, her sponsors, yeah, I know, but her sponsors, um, Nicole, they paid for it because she broke it in training. You do know that, yes, I, yeah. she broke it in training, so they got, like, Oh, let's go and let's go and get this. And then they went and done it. So, um, shit for him. But, um, what was I going to say is, you know, the whereabouts, so you know what that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I was on that because it would mean I'm good, but, um, it's you, you got to write down where you're going to be every day for the whole month, for the whole week, and you've got to continually upload it. And if you're not in that spot when they come test you, you get a red flag or a warning. You yeah, get three, three of those, bro. This is a dirty piss test. Yeah. Drug test. And you get, I'm like, whoa, quite pretty neat. That, that's probably like, for me, That's that would be a, shit, man, I've never been a pro, but I was like, it'd be quite hard and a difficult thing to do. I don't know where I am every day. Like, well, you know <laughs> what I mean? It's like, I can't forecast the future. I'm off doing crazy shit. Well, anyway. well I mean, that's one of those unglorified things where you go, oh, how good would it be to be a pro cyclist? Yeah, and, and, then, all that and, and then you've got all that stuff going on in the yeah, background. Hard. But, you know, sorry, going back to her breaking our record, um, what, from the, I, I watched the whole thing and uh, it was only an hour, so it wasn't like it was a massive <laughs> six hour race. But, um, what what her coach was saying was uh, the in aerodynamics and stuff like that. There's a thing called I've written it down CDA, uh, and I'm gonna have to find it. But her her frontal area is so skinny, and, and it actually is the size of your whole helmet. So CDA is what they measure the co. Um, Here we go. Deficient. Uh, there's some. Uh, okay. Hold on, I've done some research. <laughs> okay, so CDA. This this sums it up just in brief. Cyclists are now becoming aware. Uh, and more involved in the next frontier of cycling performance improvements in the aerodynamics. A measurement called CDA, coefficient of drag times frontal surface area, qualifies how aero the cyclist is. Simply put, the lower your CDA is, the more aero you are, What um, and what for what, the more aero you are, the faster you will be. So apparently her CDA is so low, yeah. one of the lowest that you can get. 
She's this little pinprick going through the air. Her, like I say, her helmet was as wide as her upper body. That's out the gate. So that's that's the point of look. This, we're 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 official episode one people, and we are going scientific. This is out, of, <laughs> out the gate. I left school at twelve, by the way. No joke. <laughs> But um, that's what they all go to the wind tunnel for, right? So yeah, to figure out how to get the best CDA, whether that's uh, tucked hard in, arms apart, arms in, yeah. all those sort of things. Their skin suits nowadays are specifically custom made out of yeah. some fancy molecule that, yeah, that yeah. lets that. And one of the big things they do is they choose the right country to do it in for the air pressure density. Yeah, 100%. Um, uh, you know your stuff, don't you, son? You know your stuff, 100%. And the heat of the velodrome, all those, I mean, people can rip us out and tell us the facts because it'll be interesting to know. But yeah, and you know who, so her skin suit, Nicole, her sponsor, they've teamed up with McLaren, Formula One or whatever. That's what they make their skin suits. Yeah, right. They've got skin suits for 50Ks an hour, 45Ks an hour, and all sorts of different... Wicked, eh? I'm like, give some of that stuff. They're about a thousand bucks each. I'm like, damn. <laughs> well, uh, it was 48.4 uh, Ks an hour, or 48.4 Ks is what the new record is, I think. Damn. Um, so, what a beast, eh? Yeah. Beast. And that was. Uh, Should put you in the gutter, mate. That's all <laughs> I can say. Fuck, I'll be at the arse. So. <laughs> so, that's a pretty good effort 48 K an hour for yeah. uh, one hour solid. Awesome. And she looked pretty good doing it, too. I watched yeah. it as well, and I was. Um, she was sort of 30 seconds up, even though they're yeah. talking a measurement of distance, but relative time, she was sort of yeah. uh, in that 27 seconds ahead of her previous, yeah. uh, ahead of the previous record. Yeah, so. and it's like, it's like from what I've listened to and read about on the hour record, it's all about pacing yourself. Like, and, and going back to my hour record <laughs> at Denton Park, I, what I realised was I couldn't save all these legs for the last 10 minutes because you've got no time left. You can be feeling so good, but there's no time because it's only an hour. So you've got to pace it from the start. You know, you feel good for like five minutes and then reality sets in. I remember in the middle part of it, holy shit, I was so cooked. I was like, whoa, I can't keep going. I'm thinking that the Cycling Collab podcast is going to find us a sponsor and we're going to do an hour record. Bro, I'm keen as double disc. Oh, mate, full gas. Right. You heard it here first. Rion's going to do an hour record. We're going to organize it. (laughs) Hey, Miss Ferguson, bro. Hey, I'm going to talk to Ferg about this. I'm like, Ferg, let's go and set a time. And then, bro, other people might want to beat it. I'm not sure if they will, but hey. Let's see the well, time. You're not sure if they will want to or they will be able nah, to beat they'll, it. they'll beat it. Trust me on that. But I'll <laughs> be waiting for the right day. No wind. <laughs> well, we're going to do it indoors. Oh, indoors. Oh, we're going to go the whole oh, hog and go yeah. indoors. Oh, we've got to represent Denson Park, mate. Oh, okay. Indoors. Oh, crikey. Too easy for you. I'll indoors, give her a crack. <laughs> Right. Well, the last thing on our, uh, the, the, I'm going to have a rant, and we're again. I go back. We're 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 episode one in, and uh, here comes Grumpy, and he's going to have a little rant. But um, put him in the gutter. <laughs> I'm going to put him in the gutter. You did right there, bro. You did right. Uh, unfortunately, mate, we were you and I at Labor Weekend were supposed to be lining up uh, on the same start line together, and that was going to be the only time we were going to see each other all day. But that was for the Walker 100 miler. Um, and the Walker 100 in general was as Labor Weekend. Now, due to blooming old anti COVID, yeah, uh, we're not going to get to do that. And and Tim and his team at uh, Enduro Events, who run the Walker, they have had to make the tough call and they have had to postpone it to January, which isn't a bad thing, uh, a bit more training time. But one of the reasons for that is actually, I was talking to Tim today, and um, like it takes them like 20 days to set that event up. Yeah. So they they needed to be rolling out now to start course marking, uh, putting all the stuff out that they need yeah. to do. So they've got a fairly big lead time that they've just got to make a decision on. Now there's 3,000 odd competitors, you know, yeah. there's 900 odd coming from Auckland. Yeah. There's all sorts of stuff going on. <clears throat> so just, you know, really not viable to be able to do that. <clears throat> and, you know, the majority of people have been really good about that. You know, you and I were a bit disappointed. I, you know, I thought I had you, but we're never going to know now. And, oh God, it's uh, easy, but <laughs> what'd someone say? Put them in the boom. <laughs> Put them in the boom. That's right. Um, but you know, it's always that uh, two or three or four percent people of negative who who have to have a mind a bit of a whinge about it because it hasn't gone their way or they can't go in January or or, or whatever. But I say to that, there's no need for the hate. Uh, I know Tim's been and his whole team uh, since they made the announcement yesterday. They have been wearing um, oh, emails, social media, phone heck? calls, a whole lot of stuff going on with a whole lot of hate and negativity to them. And and I just got to say, stop it. You know what? That's need those period. people, mate. 
we're going to put him in the gut is what we're going to do. Are you straight up? Right. Straight up. Straight up, the poor guy, the all their events, uh, all their event organizers, they've all been wearing it. So I don't want to rant, I don't want to go on, but just something actually interesting. Uh, Fifteen minutes after the announcement that they were that they were having to postpone it to January, they got a phone call from a guy who was entered in the fifty k and went, "Well, that gives me more time to train, so I want to enter the hundred miler now." See, now so, so he bro, went from fifty yeah, to a hundred so, miler. So, bro, bro, there you go. That's the change in attitude. That's the attitude you want. Eh? So something's happened. Yeah, you can either get negative and point other people and hate other people and put other people down to make yourself feel better. Or you can jump back and say, okay, this is actually better for me if I can train harder. Da, 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 da. You know, like it's out of the control. And like, and oh, I hate it. and a couple other good things is that if you haven't actually managed to get an entry into the Walker 100, there will actually be a new chance to get that because there's plenty of people that won't yeah. be able to make the January date, yeah. uh, which is now going to open up spots. So if you didn't get an entry, there is a chance to get one. But Bro. what I'm going to say also is, if you've done your research, Rion, if you've if you've studied the map and you've looked at where the course is going, put it in the gutter. Put it in the gutter. Because, <laughs> unfortunately, summer harvesting is going to come and they're going to harvest some of the trails. So Tim's now actually got to start oh, with a whole clean sheet and start rebuilding yeah. his actual whole course again. Damn. Now. You know, on a good note as well, so many people I know didn't do the walker because of Taurus Southland. Oh. Yeah, and now everyone's like, like, I know probably 14 people like, fucking epic, I get to do the walker. Like epic, so yeah, perfect. See, there's there's a so that's the ticket. Be thankful that we can do anything, really. You know, those people piss me off, but anyway, forgiveness, move on. (laughs) Well, that's right, move on. Let's talk about what we're here for. And uh, we promised you a Paddy Du Bay special. And uh, should we should we we talk about the elephant in the room to start with, or should I say the cobble in the room? Oh, bro, that yeah, that's awesome. Oh, so Stulo came through. There's our cobble boys and girls. So have a look at this. It's a small one, but it's quite heavy, eh, bro? A, a cobble's a cobble. It's yeah. got plenty of weight in it, isn't That's it? Really, from Roubaix as well. Yeah. So um, this savage, eh? This is this is genuine Paddy Dubay yeah. show here. Thank you, Stu, for that. Uh, awesome, eh? We promised you we would get you that in the last in the last episode. We said we were going to have a cobble sitting here. Yeah, for we got you. one. Pretty stoked with that. That's when Stu done that massive. Uh, he did the Tour de France. Followed the riders before the Tour de France. Oh, that, yeah. Um, yeah, it was for mental health. Pretty epic. Hey, bro, just on a little bit of history about um, uh, Paris Bay, I'll just speak about the under 23. I'm not sure if you know this, but um, most people don't actually because it's history. But so, uh, and the under 23 race, like a lot of Kiwis have done it. But from what I know, is that I know that, well, fuck, it's a guess here, but Tom Scully was the first Kiwi to get on the podium. He got third in 2012, um, which is pretty epic, right? So, under 23, get on the podium with that race. Damn. And then Hamish Shurers as well got third um, in under 23 as well, which again, and he was flying. Then I think he signed to uh, Quickstep, he stayed here for Quickstep, something like that, and then went on to like race for some pretty gangster teams. Um, but who won a Hamish Shurers race is insane. Who was it? Well, I know. So it's Mr. Garner himself. Yeah, Garner. So uh, Look at A-Ro. That's, that's ah. punching with some big, big names yeah, there. Mate. But a uh, question, at what distance did they ride? Oh. Mate. Did they ride the same distance? Oh, I wouldn't even have to. Surely not under 23. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't so. have thought It'd be so. pretty epic. No, it wouldn't be 260K, would it? Shit, no. I don't know. I'll find No idea. You were the man with the facts. Bro, so. sorry, mate. My facts <laughs> are shit. But that's my history. I think that's awesome, mate. Imagine fucking being on the podium like, oh, bro. With awesome. Philippe Garner, hey? Yeah. And both those guys both signed pro as well, you know, the two Kiwis. And Scud, Tom Scully was. There riding. on the weekend? Yeah, yeah. For EF education, for EF education, For EF education, yeah. Yep. What a weapon, eh? Savage. So let's talk, uh, Paddy Baby. You want to start with the women's? Because, oh, because to be fair, to be fair, the the men's race it was epic. Oh, it was an ah, epic race. Yeah, but bro, one of the coolest things from the yeah. whole weekend was the women's, the first ever women's Paris Roubaix. Yeah. Out yeah. the gate, blown away. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit! But the coverage. Sta- okay, fuck. Here's my rant. The <laughs> yeah. coverage started, bro, with 50k to go. I was like, uh, this is shit, but awesome. And then. Like it shows though, because that race was exciting for me. I was like, I'm getting you're getting your money's worth, eh? So hopefully next year they'll show the whole race. It was only hundred something k. So yeah, so that's my first point. Is that a uh, hundred and seventeen k's yeah. was it or something? Yeah. Now I know it's got the cobbles and everything in it, and I know it was seventeen a... sections. The last, they did the last seventeen sections of the men's race. But to me, at a woman's level for a pro. Yeah, uh, it's a sad day ride. Well, it's not even a sad day ride. It's a midweek ride, 117k. Yeah, oh, hold on, I have to put you in your place, Angus. Okay, 
Did you see the fucking blood on the hands? Oh no, no, like, it's a hard. Oh, no. And how, how many finishes? No, no, I'm yeah, not. Yeah. I'm not saying not yeah, taking anything right. away. Sorry, fitness, I'm just yeah. saying the distance wise. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that you know, it's oh, great yeah. that they've got the race and things, but I almost feel like we're discriminating yeah, them by sure. by reducing that number because a lot of those girls could go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fucking easy. You know, a whole, that, or at least yeah. at least to get the Arnold yeah, Forest, bro, right? Like you've got the most oh, iconic piece of the Paru Bay, and they don't include it. Now, bro, that that's what. I was like, why the fuck didn't they put that in, bro? That I, I just remember. Um, even uh, Rolly says that the hardest part of that race is actually the whole race is fucking hard. Is actually getting into the cobble section. He used to say to me, "It's sixty k an hour heading into un, uh, the Unburg Forest. Sixty k is a fucking hour fighting for position, then bottlenecking. People going every. I think Archbold uh, broke something a couple of years ago, and they're in that, that part. I mean, heaps of people have done it, but." Holy shit, I was gutted when that wasn't in the females race. But on that, it's pr- it's a start, right? It's a start for women's racing, you know, in terms oh. of adding that, another monument. The other shit thing, bro, just to go negative again, bro, prize money. Okay, the, I don't know if this is right, but 7,000 euro total prize money for the females, 91 for the female, 91,000. For the male. Yeah, for the male, sorry. That's out there. That's a bit that's some disparity there, isn't it? That, that's a kick in the face for me. I'm like, what? I mean, like, it's, it's not about the money. Don't get me wrong. Trust me, because imagine winning that race and that big as rock or if doing the race, it's, they made huge history. But that's a bit of a side note that needs to be sorted out because I got wicked viewing from that. That was in, what a race when she, and it looked like she didn't even really do a full gas attack and that cold, she just wanted a positioning if I read something and then she just rode away. And did you see a ride a bike, mate? So, so from what I understand, so so Lizzie Dagan, who won it, yeah. Um, from what I read, uh, from her, she wasn't even the designated rider for Trek. No, she was So yeah. she were, her her ride her job was to get up the road, get in a break, get up the road, do whatever. Mm. She ended up solo, and then never let off yeah. because nobody came back for her. So yeah. uh, so she kept going and ended yeah. up winning the thing. So. Yeah, and bro, on that, this, this is what this is what a lot, some people don't see. That's exactly it. That's a wicked team because she wasn't number one. She was number three. But what you seen was she went up the road to do a job or just position herself, got away. She's like, fuck it. I'll, I'll start drilling it. The gap went out. And guess what? Number one and number two in her team started working for her, blocking the road, slowing stuff down, not being dicks about it, but just getting in the mix enough, you know. And they, then they'll get dropped. Some of them crash. They bridge back up the fight. And then um, one of them ended up getting third yeah, as well. Yeah, Was it third? Yeah, sorry, third. third. Yep. So, like, what a wicked team. You know, they're not getting shitty each other, not chasing each other down. That, and then at the finish line, all cuddling each other, congratulating each other because their team as a whole one together, everybody achieves more. You know, it's wicked. It wicked. seemed potentially funny that Voss waited so long to attack or, or to yeah, to yeah. try and bridge back. Yeah. Um, being as a, Lizzie's not an unknown, right? So uh, she's yeah. got Flanders to her name. Um, uh, Liege, 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 Liege. So she's won. Yeah, three monuments. So she won now. So she's no rookie at this. So uh, and it, it seems she's like they. Hitter, bro. She's yeah. a boss. Like so holy shit. Did did Voss's did Voss and her team did they miss a beat there? <sighs> I don't know. Like it's a. I won't talk about the men's race just yet. But it's kind of like what I know is that Lizzie had the wicked cadence the whole race. A eh? real smooth, no massive spikes. She was fully in control. You could see her eating, having gels, having food. Uh, you know, all that type of thing. Really in control. Wicked bike handling skills. She went left and right on one cobble section and held it up. I was I was impressed with that. I was like, that like wicked skills on a bike, eh? Out the front of the race, mate, must feel so wicked. Um, and then you've seen uh who who was the second place girl? The other hitter, Mariana Voss. Mariana Voss. So sick. then you've seen her attack, and she attacked with it like a vicious intent of chasing that down for the win. That's what she was there for. And again, her cadence, man, was on fire, like high cadence, in control, like. She, like she was, she put a minute into her, but then it went out. So I don't want to tell that lady how to race, but like I think my they might. I mean, circumstance of racing, there was crashing and stuff. Like she had a teammate drilling it for a while as well, and then she went. But uh, maybe just a little bit, well, a lot too late. You I, know, I'd be really interested to see Lizzie's numbers because just watching the footage, uh, you know, you say that Voss went and then all of a sudden and got brought the gap back down and yeah. then it couldn't do it, but. I don't know that they expected Lizzie just to hold on like that either, nah, to be fair. Yeah. and like, that, She never faded. Nah, and that's why sometimes it's better to be at the front of the race like that. Even today on Tuesday Worlds, old Hugo Jones attacked, right? And I was like, oh, should I go with him? Because I knew I was going shit. He stayed away. Let's say he held 340 watts. If you stayed with Link and the boys, they were spiking at 500, 600 watts up the climb. Just to dropped. try. Yeah. You know, whereas last week I went early and I was up the road. Didn't get caught. 
You see? So same thing. So it's kind of like, yeah. So you missed a trick today. Yeah, 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 yeah. So did Voss. Bloody hell. But that's awesome. And the other thing is uh, three trick riders in the top 10. Uh, imagine our tricks. And, oh, bro, did you see the chain rings? So, so, so 50, 54 or 56 single chain ring on the front there single. or something there were. Yeah, and I read actually from a few little uh, sources that by taking the front derailleur off, so they had one chain ring, that's it. By taking the front derailleur off, it makes the rear changing faster and also dropping chains and all those types of things. Also, did you notice? Just sorry, Ram, I won't shut up. They they had the um their batteries hog tied around. Like so the SRAM Axis battery yeah. that's on that's clipped on the back of the derailleur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying they fall out because mine's ne- mine never has on the ones I have, but because of the cobbles that are insane. Like most bikes had that, you know, and that goes down to the directors of you know who are past winners, all passing all the information, eh? Which again, wicked. You know, well, they say the they team. used to put uh not Velcro, but like grip tape or whatever on your drink bottle to stop yeah, it being yeah, able to, yeah, 100%. To, to to bounce back out too. Yeah. So so they were, uh, you know, they had a bit of technology. I did read an article today actually about uh, a disparity uh, within the women's teams and that trekker up here and had um, like, you know, three spare bikes for each team member, 20 sets of wheels and, and all that sort of stuff. And... Who was that? The one of the Dutch teams or something? They had actually contracted in uh, Ineos uh, really? to provide some spare wheels and bits Working. and pieces and had them placed up the yard. And then, yeah, awesome. and then there were a few other teams that just don't quite have yeah have that money. there yet. But like, half those girls are probably on no money. Like I mean, I don't want to get into that either. But yeah, bro. Before I forget, do you know there was Kiwis in that race? Yeah, yeah. Henry de Christie, Christie from yep. Christchurch. Yep. Whole bro, the first woman's power Bay, and you got a young girl from Christchurch that was a part of history. And Fucking George great. Williams was in it too. Uh, George Williams, I think she, yeah, I think She's, she DNF crash or something. I think as they well. both, or neither of those two did finish. And in fact, the stats are that, that in the women's race, there were 60 finishes, 40, yeah. 44 out of the time limit, and yeah. 24 DNFs. Which is understandable. Holy shit, that was nuts. Oh, it was incredible. Yeah, but anyway, bro, that race was awesome. I'm so stoked that the females finally got to add that. And, and bro, imagine next year. And it's like, man, I just hope those. They go there and do recons and recons and girls focus on the cobbles because that race is badass. Actually, oh, I can't remember, but one of those teams were riding some two-year-old frames that have been sitting doing nothing that were custom painted because this woman's uh, Paru Bay was supposed to take place wow. two years ago, whatever. And due to COVID, it, it hasn't happened for the last no, two, sure. two years. So their frames that they were on were custom built like eighty months, <clears throat> two years ago or something. For wow. and then they and. Uh, that's what they were on on the weekend. Just a bit of a fun fact there. Uh, epic. And, you know, just touching on that, they were true bliss, eh? True yeah. Bliss. Well, it'd be interesting to see how many, if if not all of them, how many were on tube bliss. I'm pretty sure I heard them say that most of the teams were on tube bliss. I think you would be now. I think it's finally proven it's, well, after the weekend, it's yeah, definitely yeah, proven yeah. where it's at. Yeah, bro. Sure. Oh, shit. Here's another one for you, bro. Um, so, Ghana who beat Hamish Shields in under 20 for Paris, Paris Bay. So Ghana's latest world champion time trial, right? His tyres that he was using, Sonny Crabelli just won Paris Bay on them. What the hell? A cobble tyre and a, a, a TT world champion tyre. Like the same thing. And they're meant to be 20% faster uh, and they're 50 grams lighter than the previous ones, whatever. Like, whoa, that's out the gate. Like, yeah, like, so you're going to give the sponsor a plug? What are they? What were they? Uh, Continental GP GP5000s, 5000. T's. I've T- got it written T-S yeah, or S T R's or something. Yeah, but as a tire company, you'd be so stoked, eh? World champion TT, same tires, just one pair of bay. What does that say about the tire? Fucking out the gate, <laughs> oh, <laughs> fast, I, strong, reliable, punch resistant. Like you can go on. Again, I'd I'd probably like to see the two tires compared to each other there and see if the compound's actually exactly the same or whether yeah, there's some yeah. trickery going on in and, there or not. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we moving on to the men's race now? <laughs> fuck, that was. Fuck, what, that Rion, was so if you're ready to move on to the men's race, my friend, we can we can move on to the men's race because <laughs> uh, what a rip okay. snorter. Okay, listen, uh, just a quick bit of history here. Uh, okay, so we had three official Kiwis in the race, right? So you had Tom Scully, Sam Bewley, Jack Barra. Mate, those guys are all fucking hitters, right? Like I've been in races with all those guys, and I was out the ass, and they were like showed their class, of course. But for me, as a, like when I first started, I, I went to Elite Nationals, bro. I'd never run a B grade race, but I was entered in the race, and I was looking at those guys. My heart rate, no shit, was at one fifty on the start line. Holy, sh- you know, like out the gate. So, and then, bro, we uh, there was a guy, Rob Stannard, young guy who uh, is he half Kiwi, half Aussie? Yeah, and vice versa. His dad runs gravel and tar. You, you only use oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, he actually switched from a Kiwi over to Aussie. 
uh, passport, whatever. Then he signed to Green Edge. Uh, I don't know the journey there, but man, he was a weapon. And then so we had basically, in, in our view, in my view, we had four Kiwis lining up, uh, which was pretty cool, eh? Uh, and to go back to, uh, I think, our best result from a New Zealand rider in Paru Bay to date still, please correct me if I'm wrong, is Hayden Ralston. I think he got 10th, did he? Um, uh, like a long time ago. And he was sick as hell, uh, coughing up green stuff, which I read. Uh, and he got 10th, and he was also working for his team leader most of the day. I was just going to say, this is in his uh, cancel era, yeah. uh, era, was it? Right out the gate, eh? Uh, and it, he also told me uh, a few days ago, like a couple of things about tire pressure. Like I was like, bro, tell me about tire pressure because it fascinates me. Because there's a hundred k of like full gas racing, trying to get in the brake. You can't stop and get a bike change before the cobbles, right? And they're all going about fifty psi this, fifty psi that. Sorry, you're going to say something? Well, I was just going to say you can't stop and get a bike change, but that seems to be maybe the downfall of FTJ um, <laughs> along the way during that race. There was a couple of bike changes that potentially yeah. came with the wrong tire pressure yeah. in the tire. Well, half the, most of the team was sliding out on corners. Well, they were. They... Yeah, Stephen Kong, he was on the break, bro, of 29 riders up the road leading into the roundabout. He, he pulled three turns in a row watch. I was like, he needs to calm down. Full gas into this roundabout, slides out under the – I was like, oh, the poor guy. Then he crashes again trying to round another corner only because um, I think he got a new bike and the tire pressure – like he just he just like kind of pushed it out of the corner, which I would do, and then came off again. So so <laughs> digress a little bit here, but I'm interested to go back to Rowley's uh, take on the tire pressure because that yeah, is a bit of sorry, a fascinating sorry. little fact there. Yeah, so what he said um, was – he would run his tire pressure a little bit higher because you had a um, – fuck, I can actually tell you what he said, actually. He would run it a little bit higher, bro, because by the time you've done the 100K, the tires have gone down a little bit as well, you know? Um, so allowing for a little bit of bleed along the way. Um, yeah. Starting lowish, I think, did you say they were at 70-something to start with? Yeah, like, it's very personal to every rider. He's like, I used to run a 5.2 bar, 5.2. Who remembers this shit? He's awesome. 75 PSI in the rear. And 4.8 bar, 69 psi in the front. This way, um, this way, by the time I entered the harder sections, uh, sectors, I'd have lost some air. Um, and he's like, Councillara used to run his at 7B, I think. Holy hell. But really rough on the cobbles for him. You know, like. So they would be tubulars they were running there. Yeah, tubs. Yeah, yeah, back then. Yeah, yeah right. Pretty crazy. Right. Yeah. It's pretty low anyway. Um, bro, I can't even. Like, bro, I says, oh, bro, what, what were your average watts? So. On, I did a bit of stalking. Scud, Tom Scully, what a beast he is. Rolly also said, I said to him, bro, I was like, bro, do you actually believe a Kiwi can win this, win this race? He's like, yeah. He goes, at the moment, uh, Tom Scully, Shane Archibald. Fuck, I wish Archibald done a day. He's such a, he's a weapon, man. Even how he won nationals that year? Oh, bro, that's another whole story. What a legend. We won't get into that now. But he also said, young Pithy. And I was like, whoa, cool. next level. Um, Lawrence Pithy, who's riding it. Man, that's wicked, eh? That's a bit of kudos there. And oh, I don't know, maybe for Scully and and probably for Archibald, I'd just about say that the the weekends one was probably the most suited. Yeah, uh, rough because you know it's it's rough regardless, right? It's rough. It's slippery. It's it's unpredictable. Yeah. You need luck no matter what you're doing, yeah. no matter how sunny the day is at Perry Bay. Yeah. But if it is a nice sunny day, then you yeah. know there's more chance of some, you know. Those big punters really not yeah. taking it away from from what I've just saying about our guys, but yeah, 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 yeah. but uh, sometimes uh, that bit of grovel and that yeah. bit of grit determination comes out of the Kiwi boy, bro, hundred percent. And I, I, bro, I hit him up at his pals up, bro. What kind of average power you do? And it's funny, he goes, oh, I can't remember, but I know it's definitely depending on on the weather and stuff, averaging three hundred and thirty to three seventy watts for over six hours. And I was like, oh, that's out the gate. And then I looked on um, uh, Scud's uh, Strava. Go follow him. He's a hitter. Uh, he averaged 330 watts for 6 hours 41 or some shit. Yeah. Bro, go and try and do that for an hour. And and the problem with Damn. Paddy Roubaix or the likes is that it's, you, you know, in a normal Tour de France or a normal Grand Tour or whatever, you got nice smooth roads. You're sitting in the peloton. You're just cruising away for a few. There's nowhere to hide. Yeah, he right? said he go. He actually said a point to me. He's like, "Oh, bro, you're always on the pedals. You have to be on the pedals. You're mm. always fighting. You're it's, fighting to be first into the cobbles, yeah, that, and yeah. then you're fighting the cobbles while you're yeah. in there trying to stay upright. Bro, out the gate, eh? What a wicked race, though. So, just a quick summary there of the race: 258 k's. And I think uh, was it six hours two minutes? The winner, roughly that. What yeah. was was uh, was sunny? Uh, so a forty three k average for there. Uh, wow. And 
if you watch the race or heard anything about it, seen any of the photos or whatever, 43k an hour average. Yeah. In those conditions, in those muddy, slippery, like there was standing water yeah. on the road tarmac sections, yeah, yeah. Uh, let alone cars crashing, motorbikes crashing off the side. The it's motorbike guys everything. couldn't stay upright. Bro, um, I've, I, oh, I love that race, bro. I'm um, fizz off it hard out, but I also feel ro- sorry for the riders. There'd probably be like 10% that are nuts like me and fucking love would do that race. And other, some people might have to be, con- you're part of this team, we need you to do this, but you know, fuck, imagine the mechanics though. Hours after, before, tire pressure, oh, fuck. Well, some of those bikes you'll just throw in the buddy, sales, right. in the sales bin, I would right. say, against Give rebuilding them. But, but you did right. I was thinking exactly that when I was watching it. I was thinking, man, there's like a half a dozen of you up the front yeah. who know you've actually got a shot of winning it. So yeah. you're there for a reason and yeah, probably yeah. probably got your head in the game. Bro. And then there's a whole heap of you there that are just there because your team told you you got to be yeah. there. Yeah, that, we think that. We, I mean, I'm guessing. But like, yeah, like, holy shit. Bro, I, wouldn't, I, I would struggle on my mountain bike. With wide as tires, it's it's unbelievable. So the start was interesting. Um, that you know there was a few right from the gate. There was a few people try and get up the road, try and create something, try and yeah. get a break. A few threes and fours, and they couldn't make it stick, and it kept getting closed down. But then when the first yeah. and only break went, yeah. it was twenty nine riders, yeah. which. I couldn't get my head around because I was thinking, well, if you let four go, well, that's yeah. fine because you'll get them back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You let yeah, yeah. 29 go yeah, with yeah. some hitters in it. You've Work said it. goodbye. No, I was blown away. I was like, I was like, fuck, there better be a Kiwi in this. I was like, please. I was looking because I don't know the numbers of jackets are on. And then I was like, I'm pretty sure that's Rob Stannard. I fucking, and then it was him. But then I was like, Jack Val's not there, Bewley. I mean, they've got team stuff to do as well. You don't know. And I was like, please, Tom Scully be in there. And I, obviously, he's doing team shit as well. But, you know, I was just like, yeah, crazy. But the interesting thing was, though, there was that break of three that went, and it had uh, uh, Trentine in it, and then he set up. He set up, and he's a weapon, and they let it go, and he set up, so then two got away. And I was like, why did he set up? And then he got dropped maybe 60. Oh, he got dropped later on, so he must have been on a bad day. Got it. Well, somebody who wasn't on a bad day was Sonny Cabrelli. Um, intelligent bike rider. Intelligent bike rider, yes, yeah. I, I agree. Um, Let's not go to the end of the race yet. Because <laughs> I want to get shitty about that. But no, nah, what, so what even happened in the race? I forgot. How fucking nuts was it? So that break went right. 29 riders. Everyone was chopping off. Bro, who was not in it? So, okay, okay. Bora started chopping off straight away. But And I was like, hold on. Daniel Oss was in that break. He was. And he's a fucking boss, right? He's like, oh, Sagan's lieutenant, right? Goes everywhere with him, whatever. And like, a weapon. He, he punches. I think before the cobble section, I think, yep. first one. Or something like that. And anyway, Bora is straight on the front. I, I care. Is it, they, yeah. they were chasing. Okay, same, same, um, same. Fuck, who else was chasing? Yeah, but I was just like, they were, they were chasing hard. Uh, actually, Peter Sagan's brother, uh, what's his name? Oh, is it Yuri Sagan? He's got a little brother that chases every team with him. He was chasing on the front. I was like, how wicked is that? Sagan crashed, scattered. He's a weapon. He did, but I think, again, they missed the, they missed the beat there by not getting, uh, well, I mean, they had Oss in there, but, yeah. but they really needed probably two. In there, and the, especially when there's 29 up the road, they really needed oh, two in there to hold any control. Yeah, yeah. How that? It's crazy how that just happens, eh? You know, like well, fuck, 29 riders. So there were some, like you say, there were some big people missing out of that 29, and and uh, Wout Van Aert was one of those yeah, MVP. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Vanderpool, he was yeah, one of those yeah. to start with. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess although 29 is a big bunch to go up the road yeah, yeah. and probably a bit of a risky move, yeah. there were enough people there, yeah. you know, that stayed by. And I was really interested to see that Matthew Vanderpool was actually like, like that 29 had gone up the road yeah. and he was down the back of the peloton, just yeah, right. like doing nothing down yeah, the back. Just chilling, just hustling, wants the other teams to work. Do you know what was a good move? Again, quick step is such bosses, eh? They had Tim Leclerc up there and another hitter. That, so they were up in the break, free ride, not even rolling, rolling when they had to, but then sitting on, you know, playing that game. Just planted those two little uh, satellite riders up there. Who who was chasing? Bora, Sagan's team, you know? Fuck, wicked. Yeah. Smart races, mate. But, but as you could see, it probably, I mean, some tactics really came into that. There was obviously, once the break formed, it probably yeah. changed the scorebook for some of those teams to start yeah. with the re, to go to plan 17C. Yeah. But uh, no one would pick uh, how many people would probably fall off that, fall over, slip out, slide out. You know, once yeah. you can see them going down through those cobbles and they're sitting on the crown of the road and the yeah. minute they get, yeah, drop a wheel off that crown of that road, yeah. at one stage was there five or six that all hit the deck in a row yeah. Yeah. along the way. Insane, eh? 
absolutely so, insane. And what's even more insane is the way they just pick themselves back up. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah bro. I know. Do you know the other who who had a good like a team ride? I'd say, but then they got bad luck. Um, is us uh, is Ineos. Luke Rowe was up the road, mm. mate. How the fuck do you let him go up the road? He he's he's such a weapon, eh? And uh, I think he had a mechanic away, and he got dropped, and then added bike change or some shit, and then he kept going backwards, and then bro, then he. He had another mechanical, and then uh, the three or four bridging across to the front group, he pulled out in front of them or moved or whatever happened, and then he took two of them out. And then he now this thing on social media saying he told them all to go and get effed or some shit like that. Like there's a bit of drama around that. But and then they had old mate up the road who then attacked, which I'm not sure if we get into yet. Moscan. Is it Moscow? Moscow. What's his first name? Is it Danny or what is Uh, it? Yep. Bro, do you know? I was like, I was watching and then I was all the social media hate. I was like, what's this guy done? And then I was like, hold on, is he the guy that's threw that guy's bike and got kicked out and banned for five weeks? And I was like, is he the guy that racially abused that um razor guy or you know the Michael Razor? Yeah, so he's, he hasn't got the I mean, again, you and I don't know the facts. We don't know the Well, hold on, I, I, do know, I do know I do know I do know the facts. He's been banned for five well, weeks yeah. from the UCI he got he got kicked out of the world champions for going up a climb holding the car, the team car up this massive climb. So that's one. He uh he called uh Razor or Rizzo or Razor, uh like he was racially abusive in race. He has been accused of break checking his own teammate and breaking his pelvis or some stuff like that. Uh, and there was one other pretty serious one when he threw the bike. So he's been banned from his team. He's been uh, banned and, and fined from the UCI. And, and I mean, I'm all for people changing lives around and forgiveness and stuff like that. But he actually had a good ride. He had a great ride. He had a good ride. And, and, and I think that's yeah. what's upset everybody. Yeah, that, no, this is what I mean. They're like, oh, he had he a good ride. Off, he, he shouldn't be in there. And I was like, oh, but he might have changed his ways and forgiveness and stuff. But he had a good ride until he had to get a bike changed. Did you see what happened, bro? Yeah. And I, I this is this a mechanic's fault or what? Because he was on a flyer, right? He had a minute lead or something. Oh, I should have written it down, but he had a, had a good minute 15 or something lead to the chasers. He looked pretty good. Mechanical, oh, sorry, flat tire. Flat tire. Bike change. As soon as he got that bike change, new bike, no mud on it, you know, da-da-da. And he, his back wheel was bouncing over the cobble, and he was struggling. And I'm like, no shit, bro. Did the mechanic have the tires on 100 PSI or what? Well, well that's what I, I, I thought, too. That's what I thought, and, I, and and who knows what's what's happened yeah. there or gone on there. But yeah. um, it it just goes to show if that is the case, then yeah, all yeah. the money in the world. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, humans are still humans, right? That's right. But out of the gate, and bro, here's the here's the onto it thing. Like, um, mate, Sonny Cabrelli, like, to be honest, I I don't really like the guy, like as a racer, I, I, because I've just followed the bad media of the guy. But man, what a what a weapon! Like, like honestly, what a weapon! He raced so smart. He attacked with eighty five k to go, exactly where um Lizzie attacked. Uh, Lizzie rode off the front, got away. Yep. He, he did the exact same thing, and he went, you know. And then uh, Vanderpol had to bridge up to him. So Vanderpol had multiple bunches. He had to bridge his way through to get to where he had to yeah, go. So and he, he did, did work pretty hard. Of which work. he worked pretty hard. Bro, he was thrashing his bike. Yeah. So I wonder again, you know, the smartness of of how they played that out, yeah. making him do so much more work to just to get himself in a position yeah. to even be in a chance of getting to the Velodrome. Well, I think that's just how the race unfolding. Just had to go with the flow of it. Like it's naturally organic, evolving, and the race is fuck wet, raining, crashes. Everyone's out. Sagan's gone. They're not going to chase. What do I do? So Cabrelli's like, got to go now. That was obviously his plan. Went. Vanderpool's like, shit. Now I got to go. Boom. Bridge up. No one's going to pull because he would get to those groups. No one will work with him. You know, and then he got then he got to Sonny, and then Sonny started rolling with him for a while, and then the rest would sit on nut because why would you chase with those guys? They all got shelled anyway. But that's where the race was fascinating, right? What, bro? What's the guy's name? I got it written down somewhere. Who got second? Uh, like under is he under twenty three? Well, they're all yeah. So he's an under twenty three, uh, all rookies to the Paris Roubaix, which was the most interesting thing is that we had three rookies uh, or first timers on the podium. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, Vermeesh. Vermeesh, Vermeesh, yeah, yeah. that's it. Tw- yeah. Age 22, he was up the road for 200 fucking kilometers. So, your first Paru Bay, right? You're 22 years old and you're up the road for 200k in that race alone. Get a photo, put on your wall. You're the fucking man. You've got a future. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ. What are they they're calling? Uh, they're naming him someone. Um, who won Paru Bay the last time? What's his name? Uh, Sh- Philip should be it. But he's like, I don't know, I don't want to be named that. But, um, w- what a what a ride. Did, like, bro, he was so in control. He was so, uh, like, he wasn't uh, over committing. He wasn't under committing. He was always being a part of the group. Uh, 
fuck, it was fascinating. What a work, a 20 year old to have the like the resilience for all the shit that happened. You know, he actually uh, unclipped on a couple of corners and lost the gap and he got back on, didn't panic. You know, bro, what a ride, man. Bro, fuck. And sometimes I think you get in that situation that, you know, you think, well, he unclipped, he didn't panic, he, he had all yeah. that together and things. But sometimes when you're having, the, having your day, yeah, you're just having your day, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, he he said that he he reckons he should have won it. He had the legs to win it, and I I I back that. Well, well I think he, uh, you know, there's no doubt when they got to the velodrome uh, that Sonny had himself positioned in the right place at, yeah. at first wheel. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, 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 um, yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, Vanderpool, I don't know why he wanted to enter the velodrome in the lead. He almost looked like he was going to give it up while they were in there on that on that yeah. first lap, and then he went back down on the front again. Yeah. Um, Bro, it's out of it, eh? Like, and like, obviously, these guys are amazing athletes, and fuck, I'm nobody to be seen. But from my understanding, what I what I read into it is that um, it's th- those three riders very interesting because you had the under uh, Vumish who's up the road for 200 k's, right? 200 k's. To be honest, I don't think he's expected to roll at that stage. He could set on for the last 10k, yeah, and you know, and got a, got away with it. Under 22, they they'll be like, oh, Sonny Crabelli and and Van Pol, we're gonna fucking smash this little punk. Do you know what I mean? Let him sit on, and then, you know, but he kept rolling. And I I, I think, bro, he he, I, in my opinion, he should have just played the safety car. He should have rolled. But well, off a bit. well, in the velodrome, you see, for me, she dropped, or not dropped off, but he just laid up a little bit and yeah. was obviously going for that from the rear attack. Yeah, yeah. Which um, Sonny sort of had position on the track, on the yeah, velodrome yeah. in the right spot for a start. Yeah. Vanderpool, obviously, for a change, had no legs. He obviously got to the finish here and had nothing because yeah, 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 you'd yeah. normally back in a situation like that based on his history that he would yeah. have some sort of wattage to put out, but he didn't yeah, have yeah, yeah. But he also had the long way round. He was up the top yeah. and he had to go the long yeah. way round. But, yeah. but, bro, the damage was done before because Vanderpool, he – he had to ride like he did to get across with those Oh, groups, 100%. You know, and so he had to do that to make the race. They, those, those two, Sonny Crabelli and Vanderpol, got to the front. So they had to ride like that. But, bro, out of Sonny Crabelli and Vanderpol, Vanderpol was destroying it and ripping it, doing bigger bigger turns, harder. Sonny Crabelli was being the snake and the shark and the bike racer to try well, and win the race. That's right. He was being the bike yeah. racer. He was being the smart bro, guy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it's not. I'm not saying that Vanderpol's not smart either, but that's just he's a fucking racer, which I love. But, bro, Vamish actually attacked uh, – before entering the velodrome as well. And I thought that was a fake attack. I was like, he's going to do a fake attack and then he's going to sit on. He did this attack. He didn't really get far. He might've got 10 meters. They shut him down straight away. And then he should have sat on from that point there. He lost the bike race for by half a bike length, bro. Yeah. 22 year old against those two. Bro, Sonny Crabelli. Oh, here's a backstory. Sonny Crabelli, like um, Vanderpol. Oh, bro. We didn't even talk about um, uh, uh, Wimco. (laughs) <laughs> we didn't even talk about him and like the shit about him and, and world champs, right? So uh, there's like 10k to go or something. And um, uh, what's is a Australasia champs jersey? Uh, Son, Sonny Crabelli head on European champs. European champs. So okay, Remco and Sonny Crabelli up the road about to win the race. Say 8k to go or whatever. Sonny Crabelli wouldn't pull a turn. I'm here for the sprint. Remco toes him the whole way to the line and then gets shitty when Cabrelli wins the race. He's a fucking sprinter. It's a bike race. Sponsors, you got to win. You know what I mean? And, but uh, Remco just kept riding. Do you know what I mean? And that's why Eddie Merckx went in uh, national TV, Belgium TV, calling Remco selfish. You know, all this type of thing. And that's why Remco rode the way he did in the thing. They loved him. But now, shit, they all hate him. Well, I think that's just dumb on Remco's part, really. Yeah, well, yeah, not dumb, sure. but like, you know, Yep, so he's yeah, not going to yeah, pull yeah. a pull a turn, but he's quite obvious that he's a sprinter and he's yeah, yeah. and he's going to do that. Well, yeah. just sit up. Don't, yeah, bro, don't don't bloody nah. pull him. And bro, bro, uh, Gus, the, the point I'm trying to make here is that Remco, how young is he? He's so young, right? Uh, uh, uh Vimish, 22, Parry Bay. So I'm not sure if they've like learnt that hustle and snakeness of that that end of the race. They're riding the front. They they're from these under twenty three ranks where they think they can just ride all these kids off their wheel and everyone just goes, mate. You're racing in the world tour pro. Like I was, you, you know what I mean. This is these guys are like brute animals, man. You know, like another level. So you, you they need to switch into this whole game of chess race as well with our watts, you know. And I feel sorry for uh, both the Mish and um, and Vanderpool because. Yeah. As much as you say that they're young and and they'll have many more Paris Roubaix yeah, to come, yeah, yeah. man, you only you may only ever get that one shot yeah, at bro, that. That that's that's my whole point about wasting legs. That you're in that moment and you're fucking fizzing, ripping it, four hundred watt pulls for fucking ten minutes or whatever it is, like with eighty k to go. 
you know, those types of things. So but, maybe it's you learn through pain. So maybe they might learn and maybe who's in their corner? Yeah, but uh, who's uh, helping them out? Well, that's ah, that's quite right. But also, you know, if you look at Vanderpool, his history will say that he'll just keep throwing what bombs and eventually he'll he'll blow you off no and doubt. he'll and he'll be the only one left. But no in this doubt. case, it didn't work. No, so no, yeah, and it's happened before to him as well. And we're oh, oh bro, we also have to remember, bro. His first big race back was um the world champs and he's had, and they broke he stuffed his back in the Olympics. Yeah, so he's coming cool. back, you know. So hundred percent. Mate, what a legend. Superstars. Like, you'd, like, you'd almost question how much he hurt his back at the yeah, mountain yeah. bike champs. But um well, I bro, guess how do you not know the fucking ramp was moved? Yeah, hey, bro, it was it's a whole nother oh, subject. Okay, 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 it's sorry. a whole nother subject. Uh well <laughs> Van Art was uh notably missing all day, really, to be fair. Uh he's claiming that uh, the the season was about three weeks too long for him. Yeah. Well, it was a surprise, though, because I thought realistically he was probably going to be there. It was down and dirty, and it really suited him. But Yeah. I uh, mean, bro, I think he was kind of like – I think he was playing the game of chess quite smart. Other teams using their energy, you know, covering moves, his teammates and stuff like that. And I just think the circumstances of that race – is so un- uncontrollable. Puddles knee high, rocks coming everywhere, motorbikes falling off, people hitting cars, cars, cars crashing into each other. You know, uh, five people crashing right in front of you. Everyone has to unclip and wait when the front group's full gas. So I think he's just been called out. And obviously, if he's gone out and said publicly he's a bit tired, bro. I, I like. I sometimes it's kind of like you know, like we put that shit on the All Blacks. You got to win. We hate them when they don't, or whatever. Some people do anyway. It's like just because they're Vanderpool or whoever they are, you expect them to win the race. But you've got to remember circumstances, health, weather, crashes, punches, mechanicals. Uh, you know what all come into play. And this is a race where it's like a trillion things can go wrong in the first hundred meters. Well, the statistics ah. will tell you that ninety-four finishes, eighty non-finishes. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, <laughs> There, there you go, bro. Like, so you'd have to probably say uh, that that was one of the biggest days in hell in yeah. a long time. Bro, here's another thing. I've always got these gems, eh? So I always used to think, like, self proclaimed gems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, bro. So <laughs> my, my bad, my bad. So I actually always thought, like, um, that this race was called the Hell of the North because it's so fucking hard. And you look at it, like, it's, 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 it is like going to war, right? Like, it's torture on everything. But, then I found out that it's not named the Hell of the North because it's so hard and difficult on the riders. It's got nothing to do with that. It's because that part of the world and that uh, section or areas or whatever um, was devastated from World War One, like bombed. You know, everything was just devastation. So it was the Hell of War. You know, the Hell of the North. That that's what where that name come from. Not from how hard the race. There's a little fact for you. That's a true fact too, by the way. Checked as well. Well, well, actually, I was quite interested in that because I didn't actually know that either until you. There you go. What can I shared that with me the other yeah. day? I, I quite like that stuff. So that was uh, the 2021 at Paddy Dubay. Oh fuck yeah! That's like, bro, what a race, <laughs> eh? Like, and 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 all aspects, females and males, eh? You know, like, uh, it was a day in history, that's for sure. I'd yeah. have to say it'll be one that'll be remembered because actually, I can't remember that stat either. But how many years it's been since they actually had a wet one? Uh, oh, that's been that's been some time too. It, but of course, we've got to all, decades. Look, yeah, we've got to remember also this isn't actually the traditional Paris Roubaix date either, is yeah, it? Because yeah, yeah, they've yeah. shifted it due to COVID. So. Yeah, bro. Now we only have to wait six months for the next one. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Fucking epic, okay. Eh? Well, no, well, that's Paris Roubaix, and that's probably uh, probably getting yeah. close to nearly to nearly us for our first official episode of the cycling collab podcast yeah, uh thinking about going forward thinking about why our listeners should tune in again next time what are we yeah. going to talk about bro well kieran hambrook this guy's a hitter bro he's kind of stopped right now um from nelson such a weapon i remember when i first saw south and he's up the road getting the sprint jersey kom jersey and the brakes coat then he'd ride the front and lose the jerseys because he's running for his team leader i was like definition of a bike race of this guy but he was like oh we should do a pre race for Tour of and so get the start list go over the team's riders what we think uh, get some inside information and do the pre one and then uh, do a end of show wrap something like that oh, even a Southland wrap sorry going over Tour of Southland um, yeah go over the stages before it starts I've got a gravel climb in uh, yeah shit like that maybe well I know you I know you've been excited about this Perry roubaix show and I know nothing more excites you than Tour of Southland so yeah, uh, amazing, that man. will be a gem and that is I might uh, still do it I might not be here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's exactly what we should do. A pre-tour of Southland show. Yeah, hard. Um, Fuck yeah. Great that we're already getting some uh, viewer slash follower input as to where we should go with the show. Yeah. Um, 
but that'll be fine. That's where we'll go with that. So tune in uh, in a well, we're going to have to do this in a fortnight's time, aren't we? To... Well, we have to. I'm not sure when the start list come out, but we'll have to wait for the official start list to come out. They won't give it to us before it comes out. Um, yeah, so as soon as that start list comes out, well, we'll we're a pretty big thing in this media world now. You just never know what That's we good. can we can squander. That's a out good of them. point. That's a good point. I like your style. I like your style. But how badass is Southland going to be? Because Walker's off now. A lot of people uh, didn't do them vice versa because they wanted to do one of them, you know. And uh, anyway, going to be epic though. Eh? So, and they've added a stage, and so you do the team's time trial now, and then the same day, the team's time trial, bro, it's fucking hard. Like, I think I average like 505 watts, like, bro, hanging on to people's wheels out the gate. Um, and now they're doing like laps like a crit. So we'll we'll oh, we'll go into this yeah. in the uh, pre tour of South on the show to talk <laughs> to talk about that and talk about how hard that is. But uh, plenty to look forward to coming yeah, up. Boy. There's still a bit of cycling going on around the world at the moment, so that's quite good. Um, so stay with us. Don't forget, uh, you can get over to our YouTube channel and push subscribe. That's the first thing you should do. Check out the Cycling Collab podcast on YouTube. Hit subscribe. Watch this video. Watch our last video. Give us a like because all the likes, uh, all the thumbs up help. Um, if you're not into watching us, if you think Rion's too ugly, then uh, don't forget we're on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So get over to them, download, and have a listen while you're out on your bike, driving the car, uh, whatever it may be. Of course, also Instagram and Facebook as the Cycling Collab Podcast, or you can just send us an email at the Cycling Collab at gmail.com. Uh, send us anything you like, tell us. Uh, what you want us to talk about or not talk about or not talk at all, whatever that might be <laughs> by now. But uh, thank you all very much. Uh, that is officially the end of show number one. Thank you, Rion. Awesome. Um, love what you've done with the place. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back. So until then, thank you very much. Stay tuned. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share, tell your mates, tell your friends, uh, follow along. Put them in the gutter. Put them in the gutter. <laughs> 